Ooh, hey guys. I thought I'd come by and talk a little bit. I found uh, in my notebook. I went to the School of Metaphysics all oh, back in the late 80s. And I went there for maybe a month. And then they started wanting you to pay, buy books, and started beginning to be, a, I don't know, too much money. So I stopped going. But I did find a lot. They gave us a lot of material. But uh, I wanted to read something. Excuse my little patch here. This is my fentanyl patch, and I have to keep it where I can see it because if I put it on my stomach, I'll forget it's there and put another patch on, and I'll end up having two patches, and that's how you get uh, an accidental overdose. And uh, they are uh, the CDC. Uh, they're getting so strict. I have to have uh, this Narcan spray to spray in my nose when I'm overdosing. And when they told me I had to have it, I just looked at them and I said, uh, if I'm overdosing, I'll spray this in my nose and I'll stop overdosing. And they said, yeah, we have to give it to everybody that's taking opiates. I said, but I live by myself. And they kind of looked funny, and I smiled. And the pharmacist said, they didn't think, think, think that through, did they? I said, no. I said, but I hope I, <laughs> if I'm overdosing, I, I have enough sense to go get the spray and spray it up my nose, but I don't think so. But I have had, one time I had three patches on, and I couldn't reason, I couldn't hardly... I couldn't function, and, and I knew something was wrong, and I managed to get up and make it to the bathroom. And I saw myself in the mirror, and there was a patch here, one under this breast, and the right breast, and the left breast. And I said, I'm going to get ready to kill myself. And I said, no, and I took the patch, I took all the patches off, and took a cold, uh, washed my face in cold water, and came to myself, but this I have to wear it here where I can see it. But back to the subject. I had a past life memory at the age of mm, in my mid thirties, I believe. But my my first memory was when I was six months old. I made a, a video about it, and a lot of people didn't understand it and said I was crazy and stuff like that. But my memory is my memory. But I, I remembered this before I went to the School of Metaphysics. And I, I, when I went to the school, I started reading the paperwork. And this is exactly what happened to me. But I was like 49 or so when I went to the School of Metaphysics. But this is what it says. This, this is called the secret place. Imagine you find yourself in a foreign country, unable to speak the language of this new land. Everything the people of this foreign country say sounds gibberish to you. It is incomprehensible to you. However, the people of that country seem to understand what they are saying to each other, at least to a degree. So you set yourself to the task of mastering this foreign language, for you have little, if any, idea when you may be returning to the place you call home. You notice as you began to learn this new, strange language that you began to forget your native language. The new language doesn't seem to be quite as efficient as efficient or accurate as your old language, but you persevere and over time learn to comprehend and speak the new language. By the time you, the stranger, have resided in this land for seven years, you have completely forgotten the language of your origination. Origina <laughs> origination. <laughs> I'm saying origination. <laughs> 
I don't even know English. <laughs> you seem to have no recall of ever having known a different language. And you are communicating daily in the new once foreign language. In fact, you are so caught up in your existence in this foreign language that you no longer remember living anywhere else. You have forgotten your original point. You have forgotten where you came from and you have forgotten who you are. You exist in a world of limitations using your language that limits you in the ability to communicate clearly and effective, effectively. Some people have mastered this ability to communicate in clear, complete, and accurate statements of words that clearly describe the image they hold in their mind's eye. But these people are few and far between. They seem to be enlightened or wise in ways that you do not quite understand. You live out your life in this way, caught up in your life, having forgotten where you came from. Once in a while, faint recollections and brief urgence motivate you to do something more with your life and rise above the morass of your countrymen. But your efforts in this direction are usually brief as you haven't developed a lot of discipline. This is a story of a person's movement to a foreign land and the story of a soul's entrapment in a physical body for a lifetime. The soul that is you, the individual, exists in a subconscious mind when not incarnate in a physical body. The question is, where did you exist before you were born? And uh, this, this goes on and on, but I, I'll, this is just an, enough for you to just get an idea of what I'm talking about. This is what happened to me when I was, like I say, mid-30s. All of a sudden, in the blowing of the wind, that's what it was. The wind blew, and I'm, I'm alone, I'm outside. I felt the wind blowing, and all of a sudden... Pictures, flashes came in my mind and I could see things. And I remembered when I stopped sucking my mother's breasts, the clothes she had on and me buttoning up her dress. And I remember one night she took me outside in a clothes basket and I could see the stars and I'm reaching up and I knew that that was my home. And I remember her throwing something over my head to calm me down. But that memory, just bits and pieces. And when I read this uh, about the secret place, I said, that is exactly what I felt. And I don't get, you know, I guess if I sit, sat down and thought about it, I would know more. But you know, you could you could concentrate on stuff so much until you end up really being crazy. If you told people what you thought you felt or where you came from, you know, people, you know, everybody don't understand. And you, uh, people that remember are few and far between, just like this said. So, I. I don't know, I'm not going to stress it because at my age, it really doesn't matter. But if any, you know, I have what, 100 and something, maybe 130 subscribers. And even if two people understand something that I'm saying, then that uh, mission accomplished. And I don't even know what sparked me. To become enlightened. I just, I don't know. Because I was raised in a, a strict Pentecostal church. I mean, 
everybody was going to hell except for us. And we were going to hell if we didn't do exactly what this cult leader did, told us to do. So how and why it became like this, I don't know. But I, I showed, I did a video and showed this phoenix bird on my knee. I have AB negative blood, which is very rare. I was born with six fingers. Nobody else in my family like that. And nobody has AB negative blood. And I don't think I'm so special. But now my oldest son, ooh, both of my sons, my youngest son too. My youngest son is always a witness to the phenomenals that I've seen. He's there. He looks and he says, Mama, you're not crazy. We actually saw this. So he stands as a witness and my sister is a witness. But my oldest son. If you, if he, when he's asleep and you wake him up out of his sleep, he wakes up speaking a whole different language and you, you, you try to pull him out of it and he still speaks that same thing over. He says it and his ex-wife came to me and she says, Miss Mary, I don't, I don't know what's wrong, but. Keith does this. He speaks a whole different language when you wake him up out of his sleep. And I told us, yeah, he's been, he does, he did that when he was um, in his uh, adolescence. So I, I don't, I looked that up on the internet and there is a group of people who do that. They, they speak a different language and his dreams are animated. I, I asked him, you know, because I was curious about what's going on. Why do you speak a different language and you don't even know you sit speaking it? Because you'll ask him to repeat. He'll be speaking blah, blah, you know, whatever he's speaking. I'll say, say that again. And he'll say it again. But I wish he had recorded it. But look it up on the Internet. And I mean, I, I don't know how I found it. I just typed in this long question. People who speak a different language when they are waking up, and it's quite a few people who do that. But back to the subject, I, I ventured off, but I don't know what it is, but a lot of things I keep to myself. I really have to, and I write it down, and things that I know, I, I just, I know, and, and my youngest son, because he's there when I say these things. And, you know, people, uh, crimes and people who have been murdered and they can't find the bodies. And I know exactly where they are. My youngest son said, Mama, you know, the police will think you the one did that. For you to know exactly where these dead people are and they can't find them. I said, uh, I don't know. But if I think about it. If I concentrate on it, it's, it's nothing. The slate is clean. But if you ask me a question and I say the first thing that comes to my mind, there it is. And I don't know. But, you know, people have gifts. Ooh, my nose is so greasy. People who have gifts, I guess you could, uh, you know, try to profit from it. But mine doesn't, my gift doesn't work like that. Because I used to, I guess I could still do it. The scores on football. I could, I could give you the scores at football games and it would be exactly like what I said. But if I tried to think about it too hard, it wouldn't work. And one guy asked me to do the lottery numbers. <clears throat> and I could, I could give him the numbers. And he would win, but when I tried to do it for myself, it wouldn't work. And then this friend of mine, the same thing happens to him. Sometimes he he gets the numbers for himself, but he would give the numbers to other people. And out of gratitude, some people would uh, give him some money uh, when they won. But, you know, in the end, you know, you just... 
I mean, you know what you know, and you don't even know why you know. And majority of the times, you don't want to know. The thing that you thought was a gift, is it ends up being a horror story. You don't even want to know it. So, I don't know. But I'm going to read some more about this, uh, the secret place. And I guess, you know, first of all, you would have to believe that there is a secret place. And surely, it's got to be more than I was born on blah, 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 and I'm on this planet. Because even when you think about it, you had to be somewhere else before. Because I, when I think about me, not Mary, you know, that's the name it gave me, but me. It seemed like I have always existed. I don't, I don't even know why. It seemed like, um, I don't know, it's like you go to sleep and you wake up. A, a picture is having surgery and you wake up from surgery. It's like, ah, I'm here. And that's, that's the way when you are conscious of people at the age of maybe two or three, maybe three or four, something like that. All of a sudden, you just wake up and you realize it. Oh, I'm in this place now. And you've forgotten where you came from. So... I do believe in reincarnation. That's that's the thing. I do believe there, and like I told you, I've had past life regressions. And for people who really want to find out uh, some of their past lives, you'd have to relax and and see a good hypnotherapist that does past life regressions. And and be, you know, just be relaxed and go do this. And you don't have to tell nobody that you did it. Because, you know, a lot of people are, will tell you don't do stuff like that. And it's crazy. But <laughs> this is this is to your life. Isn't this the cutest little candle holder? I'm really uh, cautious about burning candles, though. Because my, my ex-husband... I don't know if he was in a fire in a past life or something, but I I love candles. We used to play with candles when we were kids, and and that's just I, the freedom to burn a candle. I just couldn't wait to get grown. But I marry a man that's afraid of fire. He, I mean, if we would go to a club or something, we'd be trying to find a seat, and he's looking and eyes all bucked and. I said, what is it? He said, I'm, I'm looking for the door in case this place catches a fire. I said, a fire? I said, sit down and enjoy the music. So he's conscious of fires. And you just, I couldn't light candles. It's, it's like you get your flashlight. You can't be playing with that fire. I mean, it's, it's just bad omen. And so that kind of stuff is kind of in, in, uh uh penetrated my mind now because I can still hear his voice. You're going to set the house on fire. And just different things. And, and even when I'm doing stuff around the house, cleaning and washing and folding clothes. and He was a laid back, lazy man. And he would always say, you can't do everything today. You won't have nothing to do tomorrow. Stop, stop. And I still hear his mind, his mouth saying that. So hear it in my mind. So now her I am just lazy and don't do nothing. Hardly. Do everything today. You won't have nothing to do tomorrow. I'm getting ready to close. This is our favorite book. Mm, I'm thinking of a question. My past life. My past life, I, I would like to know something about my past life. And was I a royal person in my past life? Okay, now think about what you want to ask. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> um, 
Mm, it says, watch and see what happens. Okay, watch and see what happens. I'm going to have to do something about my book. I don't know. I put some tape or something on it. But anyway, that's the fun we had today. But uh, think about, try to try to do your memories as far as, go back as far as you can, your first memory. And relax. You know, you can regress yourself if you want to. <laughs> anyway, blowing this candle out. Peace. Happiness and a long life.